In this video, I'm going to explain a relatively tricky bit associated with a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And that tricky bit is the between subjects effect. It's a bit surprising to see a between subjects effect in a repeated measures ANOVA, a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, because there are no groups in it. So what is this between subjects effect? Well, I'll show you in a minute what it usually looks like. So these data here are just uh, simulated data where people provided ratings uh, across four seasons in a year and the dependent variables measured on some uh, scale from 1 to 11 and I'm going to do a regular repeated measures ANOVA and I've already done it here are the four factor four levels in the factor define I've got the four levels here they would have been here to begin with put them in there and I click OK and here is the output that you get from SPSS it would be the same thing for any other program uh, we have the multivariate test. Here's Motchley's test of sphericity, uh, which is an assumption associated with repeated measures ANOVA. Here's the test of the within subjects effect. So this is testing the null hypothesis that the mean associated with summer, autumn, winter, and spring are equal. That's what people are almost always interested in when they do a repeated measures ANOVA. And then we have the test of within subjects contrast. And then here is the perplexing test of between subjects effect. And it's statistically significant, F410, P less than 0 0.001. 1. So what is this between subjects effect? Well, what it is, is it's a test of the grand mean against 0. And what that grand mean is, is literally, if you averaged the means across summer, autumn, and winter, and spring, then you would get a value that is probably not zero. So in this case here, uh, if I were to get the, I didn't actually ask for, let's just go with the frequencies to get the means. And we can see that the mean for summer, autumn, winter, and spring is actually going down. But none of these means are, are zero. And more importantly, if I averaged these means, 7.07, 3.1, 7.6, and 2.35, that average would be a value that's greater than zero. And this is what the test of between subjects effect is testing, is the average of the means, or the grand mean, statistically significantly different from zero. So to help push the point further, I generated data that uh, have a grand mean of zero. And I'll show you that the test of between subjects effects ends up being zero. So here are the data, just time one, time two, time three data. And I've got three levels in the within subjects factor. And I'm going to put them into here. And I'm going to click on my options and get descriptives this time. And click OK. And here are the results. And I'm just going to go down to the between subjects effect. And we can see that it's exactly 0. So an f of 0, p of 0 0.10, and there's not even a mean square associated with this uh, term. So what, what's happened with these data? What makes them so unique? Well, the grand mean is 0. I've got a mean of negative 1 for time 1, 0 for time 2, and plus 1 for time 3. So if you average those means together, you're going to get 0. And that 0 is obviously not statistically significantly different from the null hypothesis expectation of 0. And that's why I'm getting exactly an f of 0. So that's why that is an explanation of the be between subjects effect. What I think is, I mean, that is the mystery behind it. What is it? It's an answer to a question that arguably is not very interesting in the vast majority of cases. I'd be, to be honest, I can't even think of a study that I've ever come across where the researchers were specifically interested in the test of the between subjects effect. So I'm not really sure uh, why SPSS reports it, given that it doesn't report other things that it probably should in, in a lot of analyses. But it actually saw fit to report this. If anyone actually knows a study where they did test uh, the between subjects effect for repeated measures ANOVA because they were specifically interested in it, let me know in a comment. Uh, I'd be curious to see what this paper looks like. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you next time.